Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have another episode of This Is Not A Top 10. And if you've been following the channel, you know that I started this video and actually many other videos of this kind uh, as a way to just talk about a lot of different fragrances with you guys. My biggest fear was basically getting up here and having nothing to say. So I developed a lot of different videos as, you know, excuses basically to talk about perfume with you guys. That's absolutely what I love to do. Uh, and just to give you an idea of how much I love to do it, I'm actually sitting for my CFP exam on Monday. And here I am, Saturday night, doing a video for you guys. Mostly because I didn't do one yesterday. I'm a very routine person and I've been studying all day. And for me, this is like a break. You know, this is like a... I get to hang out with you guys and talk about my passion, talk about my hobby, and I absolutely love it. Uh, so today we're going to focus on a note that I was almost in shock when uh, a subscriber wrote me and said, hey man, I don't see any videos on, on Anise or Star Anise that you've done because this is not a top 10. The whole idea is um, I could talk about fragrances in my collection that have a particular note. And I thought, no way, there has to be... Um, there has to be a video on Anise in there. I must have done it. And I looked multiple times. I went through the channel's history. Nope, nothing there. Now, to be fair, I have put out a lot of content. Uh, so whenever you go back, if you're, if you're newer to the channel, I would urge you to go back through the history of the channel, look through my older videos. You know, just because they're older doesn't mean they're bad. There's a lot of good content on the channel for you to kind of discover. And I've, I've created a ton of playlists. I created playlists for, you know, specific uh, video ideas like this is not a top 10. Then I created a separate playlist for the ones that I actually go in and rank. So whenever I do a ranked video, you know, they have their own playlist for per ranked perfumers portfolio videos or, you know, um, this year in perfume ranked has its own playlist and then houses. So if I do uh, reviews or do videos that focus on the House of Guerlain, for example. They'll have their own playlist. There's a lot of content for you to go back through. But, shockingly, to my dismay almost, um, there was no video on uh, Anise, on Star Anise. And so I decided that's it. It has to be done because then it'll give me a reason we can go back. We can add it to the list of, uh, you know, this is not a top 10 videos. And then eventually I'll go in later on and, and, and rank this. So this is going to be an unranked list. Actually, I put them in alphabetical order today just because, you know, I just picked some from my collection that had the Anise note. I'm sure it's not everything. But remember, this video is about fragrances from my collection that have this note. So if you write me in a couple months and be like, dude, how did you leave out the greatest Anise fragrance of all time? And it's this. And I'll say, sorry, I don't have it in my collection. These are just fragrances from my collection. Not every fragrance ever created that has the note of Anise. So if you've never smelled Anise, it basically gives this um, spicy, sweet, you know, many people associate it with licorice, if you will. Um, and to me, it's a very uh, powerful masculine note because there was a lot of Anise or, you know, Anise-like notes used in the olden days, the days that I absolutely love. Uh, fragrances made in the 70s and 80s for men used to use Anise all the time. Or, the other thing is, is the reason that this smell is so ubiquitous with masculinity is there's another note called tarragon and i do have a video on tarragon it's one of my favorite notes i've found whenever i see tarragon in a perfume i know i'm basically gonna love it but it also has this licorice anise like smell uh and so if you find that you're in love with the note of anise or star anise apparently star anise has this um very intensely sweet uh spicy sweet combination that is very pungent and warm and it's a lot warmer than just regular anise from kind of the some of the uh you know research that i've done has a little bit of a woody undertone so you'll notice a lot of the older fragrances here will have the note of anise the newer fragrances you'll notice will have a note of star anise and i think because star anise has a little bit more of this um sweetness to it this warmth that that uh, just Anise doesn't. I think that's correct. I don't hold me to it. But uh, I think Star Anise has a little bit of a sweeter Anise side, if you will. So again, if you love these type of fragrances, like if these are your, 
heart fragrances and you're in love with this kind of uh, cre these type of creations, go check out my This Is Not A Top 10 Tarragon video. I think you'll find a ton of other fragrances that have this scent profile. So let's do scent of the day as is customary on Channel Ram and then we'll hop right into it. So scent of the day uh, is something that you actually may be surprised that I love. But I absolutely love this. I love all the flankers that I own, whether it's uh, pure coffee, uh, the traditional Amen, you know, whether it's B Men, whether it is uh, pure Havan, pure Mall. I love them all. But today I wore pure leather, and it is uh, the middle of March. It starts. Some days are a little cooler. Some days are a little bit warmer, and this just fit beautifully. This is basically, and if you look at the bottle, it almost looks like there's a little bit of this leathery. T texture to it, right? And if you flip it over, um, you'll notice that you want to go for the bottles that still say Thierry Mugler. Don't buy the ones that say Mugler. I think this was discontinued before, you know, L'Oreal took over and, and really started butchering the creations from, from the house of Mugler. Uh, this is discontinued, by the way, but you can still find bottles floating around on Mercari and eBay and stuff like that. And, you know, this is basically... That Amen Patchouli Heavy DNA, right? With leather. That's basically it. Uh, it keeps that Amen DNA. And you know what it feels like? It feels like the patchouli is almost having to like go into spy mode and like, you know, put on a spy hat and glasses and pretend to be a leather. Uh, sometimes the leather feels a little strange. It feels like the patchouli is like in drag, you know, pretending to be that leather note. But I love this DNA. Yes, it's sweet. It's almost like a guilty pleasure of mine. This whole line is like a guilty pleasure. I love them all. I love Pure Havan, Pure Malt, Pure Coffee. I mean, B-Men, you name it. Uh, taste of Fragrance. Uh, I love them all. The, the one that's on my radar that I still have not found is Pure Tonka. If anyone has a partial or something of Pure Tonka, uh, I'm in the market for it. But uh, I'm just not... I refuse to pay $250 for a bottle of Pure Tonka. They're insane. Uh, so... That is my scent of the day. So let's get into this. This is going to be a unranked uh, video. I have one uh, honorable mention, if you will. And the honorable mention is a fragrance that was created by Jean-Claude Elena, but it was actually uh, as a rep as kind of an homage to a vintage fragrance called Apre Londe from Guerlain. I don't own that fragrance. I do have a video up on it, though. I basically killed that little decant that... Uh, I think Rachel sent me a decant of Apre Londe, uh, and I have a video on it if you want to go check it out under the Guerlain playlist, but this is called Lodivea. And Lodivea is on the honorable mention list because, so uh, this basically inspired Jean-Claude Elena. He was, he was inspired through analysis and conceptual redesign of Apre Londe to create a modern niche version of it. And he adopted the same interplay of this anisic aldehyde, almost, almost like this almondy, vanilla-smelling heliotropin and orris, which kind of uh, brought it into the modern age by using his, you know, uh, patented transparency and airiness that he uses. So because of this anisic aldehyde that was used, I figured it would be a good honorable mention. There's no anise note listed, but um, it's got heliotrope, iris, musk, bergamot, hawthorn, angelica, carnation, honey, jasmine, and caramel. And you guys know I'm always honest with you, even when it's to my detriment. And I am currently hunting down these older bottles of Frederick Mall uh, that were before L'Oreal bought them. You can tell by the um, by the writing on the back. Uh, as long as it doesn't say EDP France Holdings, it is an older bottle like this. And you can see how the writing on the older bottles was. Uh, and if you find a really old bottle, the uh, cap will be matte, not shiny. So I'm hunting down the older bottles. I think they have more depth. I think there has been some reformulation going on with this house. And so I want to kind of grab them while I can. So, but that is a fantastic fragrance, powdery and, you know, just uh, reminiscent of a classic, if you will. Okay, so let's get started on the real list here. So the first one is a decant. It's not a full bottle. It could be a full bottle. I just don't think that I would, I don't think I would pull the trigger on it, honestly. I don't think it's good enough to be full bottle worthy for me. It is uh, Royal Tobacco by Amouage. I have a video on this. I said that this is probably the best uh, new fragrance that came out under the tutelage of uh, the Fishman 
who I'm not a fan of, but Cecile Zerokian made this. I don't like the way they're taking Amwaj. I think I think Amwaj is in trouble actually for the for the fragheads. Now they may be doing record sales for the general public. But I think the creativity that Christopher Chong had going there is basically dying off. They're going for the money. Uh, and But for me, Royal Tobacco is, is a good creation. It feels like an amouage. It's smoky, it's spicy, it's resinous. It has uh, that anise in the top with cardamom and elamine. And you're going to get a lot of oils. So this is a very oily feeling fragrance on your skin. There's frankincense oil. There's this licorice root, which, which reminds me of a... Uh, of the way licorice is done in a fragrance we're going to talk about later on. So you have both anise and licorice here. And um, the uh, tobacco uh, is really, it's it's prominent. I mean, you're going to get the tobacco absolute almost right from the get-go with a lot of what feels like smoke. So you're going to get these balsams in the base and myrrh and stuff like that. And there's a little bit of oud as well. Assam oud, they say. Uh, labdanum, kind of that sticky, smoky, resinous feeling tobacco with the anise in the top. Some compare it to Eau Noir, which is a very interesting comparison. Imagine you took Eau Noir and like amped up the smoke and the um, amped up the smoke and the tobacco. I don't think Eau Noir has tobacco. Let's say you add tobacco and frankincense and smoke and made Eau Noir like an amouage, and you kind of get Royal Tobacco. There's another one on this list that actually does what Royal Tobacco does for me. Uh, and, you know, I don't have to buy a bottle since I already have it. So I'll tell you guys which one that is when the time comes, if you're interested. But uh, Royal Tobacco, first one on the list from Amouage from 2022. So next on the list, we have an Aramis. And this whole line apparently is under threat. It's basically being discontinued at some point. It's been confirmed now for a while. You can still find them because they're not super popular. But uh, I think this was such a mistake by uh, Aramis to, to shut this line down, if the rumors are true. But uh, this is called Aramis Tuscany Per Uomo. And this is a beautiful spring summer fragrance for me. Some people say the leather in the base makes it wearable in winter too. I prefer stuff like this because of the way that the citruses are used. There's a lot of lime and lemon and bergamot. And if you think about Tuscany, I mean, everyone thinks about the bright sun and, you know, warm days and stuff like that. And that's kind of what I get here. There's a stunning lavender note and, of course, anise. And the anise is the old style anise mixed with caraway, basil, very manly fragrance to me. And uh, there's very little sweetness, but it's still very likable. Uh, you know, it has this Italian optimistic feel about it. The Italians love their bright citrusy openings. And this was kind of trying to, uh, you know, impersonate that a little bit, if you will. And um, so the original bottle of this, this is a vintage bottle. So you can tell because it says Tuscany on the side and the older bottles kind of have a star on the bottom. But uh, the real older bottles weren't even called Tuscany. They were actually called Aramis Etruscan. And so I've never actually smelled a bottle of Etruscan, but I hear that any version of this is good from what I hear. It's just the newer versions don't have the leather and the oak moss is amped up, of course, as the older versions. But what a fragrance this is. Oh, man, when I rank the um, anise or the star anise note, this is going to be very close to the top, I would assume. And another one that's going to be very close to the top, so back-to-back -back big hitters, is... Um, is a Gerard Anthony masterpiece. This came in top three on the Gerard Anthony countdown, although if anyone put this number one as Gerard Anthony's greatest creation, it would be very hard to argue. It's just for me, Balenciaga Pour Homme is just such a such an amazing fragrance, it's hard to, to put this ahead of it. Uh, and this is Azaro Pour Homme. So any bottle that you find of this is good. I think even the new stuff, but if you can find the ones that have the sticker on it, they just have a little bit more, you know? That's just, just the best way I can put it. They just have more. Uh, they last longer. They feel deeper. The uh, I think the oak moss and the leather, again, feels heavier. Oh, what a creation this is. This is a barbershop fougere. And um, 
the anise and the caraway. So again, very similar combination, anise caraway. Actually, I think that this was probably a big inspiration for this because this came out in 1984, if I'm not mistaken. This came out in 78. And so I think this anise, you know, what they did is they really amped up the uh, citruses in Tuscany per Uomo. But if you look at the note listing and the way the fragrance wears and stuff like that, they're, they're very, very similar. Um, you know, the note listings themselves are also extremely similar. This has lavender, bergamot, lemon, anise, caraway, basil, uh, all, you know, just notes, leather, oak moss, tonka bean, just all these notes that you find in, um, in Tuscany per Uomo. So they're very similar wares. This has iris and clary sage. I don't think there's any iris and clary sage in Tuscany per Uomo. And it just feels a little bit more traditionally barbershop. Yeah, it feels a little more spicy, a little more traditionally barbershop-y, whereas uh, the Tuscany per Uomo feels a little bit more citrusy. Um, but, I mean, what a fragrance. Everything about this is... I mean, it, it's James Bond in a bottle to me. This is smooth, classic operator. You know, a man that just has the ultimate amount of class. Years don't matter. The class that he portrays is kind of timeless. I mean, you walk in wearing this and um, and everyone knows that you have, you've got taste. I mean, you have to have, you have to know your stuff to enjoy something like Azaro Peron. Most of the Younger guys nowadays, say in their 30s or younger, are probably going to smell this and go, "Oh, it smells! It smells dated, or it smells like grandpa." Or, but they don't know what they're talking about. This is a Hall of Fame fragrance, as far as I'm concerned, and uh, I am pro. I should probably get a backup because this is actually the only bottle I have. But uh, absolutely love Azaro Porom. All right, next on the list. I added, this is the only one on the list that actually does not list a note of anise, but it's there. I mean, I smell it, especially uh, in the dry down, because it really feels like in the dry down that old school Azaro Porom DNA comes out. And this is from 2015. This is Azaro Porom Intense. Now, apparently, there's an Azaro Porom Intense from the 90s, which I've never smelled before. This is the one from 2015. And this is... Um, so this is what a lot of these houses do nowadays. They take a classic like a Zorro Porom and they modernize it by adding a bunch of sweetness and a bunch of notes like liquor. So this has a liquor note. It has this big Venezuelan tonka bean, they say, and amber. They added a lot of amber and cinnamon. Uh, and you can kind of tell by the bottle. It looks a little bit, you know, more gourmand, if you will. And it feels a little bit more gourmand. Yeah, it feels more ambery, gourmandy, sweet. You know, it has that sweet tonka that you kind of smell and everything. However, if you get past kind of the magician's opening and you let it get into the dry down, this has the same DNA. You get a little bit of that old school Azaro Porom, you know, DNA in the base. I would just probably wear Azaro Porom 10 times for every time I wore this, but um, I'm still glad to have it. I think it's a good scent. Okay. Next on the list, this is the one that I think is the reason why I'm not buying a bottle of uh, Royal Tobacco. This came out in 2017. This came out years before Royal Tobacco. And uh, if you look at the note listing, you're going to think I've completely lost my mind. But I'm telling you, they smell very similar. This is called Iron Duke by the House of Beaufort. And I'm really liking this house. There's a couple others from the house that I want. Terror and Magnificence and... Um, they have a queer, they have a leather, queer something, queer de noir or something. Um, this is kind of also a little heavier on the leather and a little heavier on what they call a charred wood note. And it's true. This smells insane. The way I describe this is imagine being in a tank, okay? So there's metal all around you and the people behind you are smoking, maybe drinking because they're, they think they're going to die because you're in a war. You're in a freaking tank, right? And um, in the background, all of the shit from the artillery and bombs going off. There's force kind of burning in the in the background behind, you know, in front of you, behind you. There's fires that are raging. You can smell this very charred wood feel in the air. 
and there's star anise, there's tobacco, there's liquor, there's Cambodian oud, there's metallic notes, there's animalic notes, there's leather, and there's gunpowder accord. To, to even top it off, there's a gunpowder accord. So imagine the tank shoots the gun, and there's smoke that rises up in the air. You get this, this, um, you know, this empty shell. Yeah, it's just... And then there's bourbon whiskey in the base with um, hay, musk, and to top it all off, all of those insane notes, there's a soap note in the heart. A soap note. Uh, so there's this contrast of insane, smoky, spicy, leathery, resinous, gunpowder, metallic, oud, liqueur with cleanliness. It's just a brilliant fragrance. And this very well may have inspired um, rural tobacco. This, I could see, imagine you took this and mixed it with Eau Noir and you kind of have rural tobacco. So what a creation from 2017. Gets almost no love. Julie Dunkley, the perfumer of the House of Beaufort, I think she deserves uh, a lot more love. Great house she's created. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Next on the list, we have a Bois 1920, and uh, my powers of observation tell me that this house um, has probably been sold. I don't know for sure, but all my older bottles are in Eau de Toilette. Now they only offer them in Eau de Parfum. <laughs> they don't do Eau de Toilettes anymore. They're only Eau de Parfums. And um, the older bottles that I have, I'll say Morris Parma on the bottom. Morris Parma, Italy. The new ones say they're being marketed by Arnaway. So my guess is, my powers of observation are telling me that this house has been sold. And Rich Mitch, who I trust, says that the new versions of the Eau de Parfum are not worth it. So I'll take his word for it. Um, <clears throat> go get these old Eau de Toilettes floating around while you can is, is my advice. Uh, and then I'll probably be done with this house. But uh, Sushi Imperial, probably one of the scariest names of a fragrance you could imagine. Sushi Imperial. And no, it doesn't smell like sushi. It's a 2005 release. So this was released in the same year that the house was founded. And they've got some good ones. Um, there's, some, there's some good stuff that this house put out. They have one called Extreme, uh, which smells a little bit like a patchouli heavy version of like Heritage by Guerlain. They have um, Real Patchouli, which is a fantastic patchouli, one of the best out-and-out -out patchouli fragrances. Uh, and they have this, Sushi Imperial. And Sushi Imperial, think of YSL Opium Pour Homme, which is coming up at the very end of this list uh, because of Y, and we're doing alphabetical. But imagine that you kind of... Um, used maybe a little more of that old school anise. It's a little bit more citrusy in the top. It's not just that anise, ambery, you know, blend. There's a little bit more of this old school anise that isn't as sweet with citruses amped up. So it's more citrusy, which makes it maybe even a little bit more wearable. Although I think YSL Opium Pour Homme is very wearable. There's nutmeg, cinnamon, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka bean, vetiver, bourbon, vanilla, jasmine, pepper, rose, and then the anise, of course, aniseed. So uh, yeah, Sushi Imperial. If you like, if you like Opium Pour Homme, this is one to check out. It's like a niche version, but go for the Eau de Toilette if you can. Okay, next on the list is an all-time classic, an oldie but a goodie. And if you're a fan of citrus fragrances, this is um, this is right up there for many with uh, Armani. Eau Pour Homme and the original Gucci from 1976 that Guy Robert did. Uh, Eau Sauvage by Dior. So this is called Capucci Pour Homme. So Capucci Pour Homme. Roberto Capucci. And uh, Roberto Capucci. So this is an older bottle that I got from Styx. I don't know what the new versions of this are like. All I know is this is good. This is, um, I think I would actually wear this over Eau Sauvage. And this came out a year after Eau Sauvage, so they definitely took notes. This is uh, lemon, bergamot, lime, basil, anise. And it smells very, um, 
very bright and citrusy, and it really smells of its time. It smells like you're smelling something from the 1960s, you know? Uh, old school Italian. I imagine that this is what the old school Italian mafia bosses smelled like, right? Lavender, cyclamen, clove, jasmine, pimento, with a base of oak moss, leather, musk, amber, frankincense, and patchouli. And maybe that's why I prefer it over Eau Sauvage, the Eau de Toilette, is um, it has that leather, it has the frankincense, it just feels like it has just a little bit more heft, right? And it still has that citrusy vibe of Eau Sauvage, though, but it's good. It's, uh, it's a good fragrance, just not my favorite type of fragrance, but uh, it deserves some recognition. So, Capucci Porom comes in, well, I was going to say at number, but we're not numbering these. So Capucci Caporum is uh, is next on the list. Now, really next on the list, see if I can talk here, is uh, Dior's Poison. And this is the discontinued Esprit de Parfum. If you ever see this Esprit de Parfum, grab it. This is an outrageous monster of a fragrance. Honestly, it is... Oh, I mean... I wish you guys could smell this. The the It's like a... It's like a, it's like a resinous, smoky plum. Like, uh, I know this is supposed to be like a poison apple, but just the color of it looks like a plum, right? And the color is spot on. I mean, it's like a smoky, honeyed, um, uh, honeyed, smoky honey is a great word for it, but there's also rosewood, there's berries, there's pimento, there's anise, um, and the killer note in here is tuberose. This is one of the best tuberose fragrances I've, I've smelled from a designer. Stunning. Uh, out of this world stunning. And it's huge. It is a statement maker. You wear this and everyone in the room will know you're there. Uh, it's got, you know what it feels like? It feels like a, it feels like you took, um, it feels like Dior sat down in the boardroom and said, we have to compete against YSL Opium. You know how Opium is just this giant fragrance, not just in projection, but just in depth and complexity. And it's just a huge, it just paints this mental image in your brain. Uh, and this is Dior trying to compete with, with Opium. And this is 1985, the year of Ram Duck's birth. Uh, and a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Just harder to find these older bottles, but they are immense. I mean, that'll last me the rest of my life. That 50 mil, I mean, you'll never, you'll never run out of that juice. You just need a drop and it just blooms. Um, okay, next on the list is a discontinued Escada fragrances. All of the Escadas for men are discontinued, unfortunately. Uh, I wish they would bring these back, but uh, this is a Dominique Ropion. And this is a fragrance that goes for silly money right now. If you pay four or five hundred bucks for this, you'll probably be discontinued. Or you'll probably be discontinued. Maybe you'll be discontinued, but you'll be disappointed uh, because it does kind of smell like a designer, but a very well-made designer. It came out in 1999, and it's called Casual Friday. And I got the big boy bottle, uh, the hundred and. 25 mil. So I'll be set on this for life too. This is anise, bergamot, tarragon, coriander, lavender, cinnamon, jasmine, fruits, cardamom, carnation, lily of the valley, tonka bean, amber, oak moss, patchouli, cedar, and vanilla. And if you like fragrances like La Mal, I know people who love Casual Friday like Duncan don't like me comparing it to La Mal, but it has this lavender, um, you know, this vanilla lavender combination, basically, that Lamal has. and But this feels so much better done. It feels like this is what Lamal was supposed to be. Lamal was a huge hit in the 90s. Huge, right? Uh, and this came out the end of the 90s. So they probably were trying to compete. Although what they ended up doing was they ended up making a fragrance that does what Lamal does better. More... Uh, you know, Lamal has that juvenile sweetness to me. Anytime I smell Lamal, it's like, where's the 14-year-old kid that's going to the Abercrombie and Fitch store in the mall? You know, like, that's the vibe, right? This smells much more polished, more professional, more um, experienced. Yeah, it just has that. And, and it's it's deeper, it's richer, it's just a better fragrance all in all for me. But uh, Casual Friday... Uh, 
the anise will come out too in the top. You'll, and it has anise Aaron, and tarragon. So it mixes with that lavender in the top to give you just something, something primo. I'm a big fan of Casual Friday. Speaking of big fan, I'm a big fan of pretty much all these fragrances. Uh, but this is probably backup bottle worthy. Uh, just like I was saying, Azaro Pour Homme, I should get another bottle. I should probably get another bottle of this too. This is Francesco Smalto Pour Homme from 1987. Uh, what a fragrance this is. Green, spicy, lavender, anise, rosemary, you know, this smoky oak moss in the base with leather. Fantastic. Best fragrance from the house. Although Malto Smalto is good. This is the best fragrance from the house. Um, and doesn't matter what bottle you buy, whether you get one that has the gold that goes all the way around or the lines or it doesn't matter. Any bottle you can find is fantastic. It's, um, it's so good. It's uh, it's just, it's the heart. Uh, you know, when I think of Italian perfumery done right, this is something that comes to mind. Uh, just the, just the, uh, the way that the, the fragrance gives off this green spiciness, the lavender makes it very herbal. Um, the anise and there's, there's anise tarragon combination in here as well. And there's a little bit of neroli, which adds a little bit of brightness and there's this traditional fougere uh, construction, and you'll get it. You'll you'll get the uh, fougere feel. Many people compare this to Enrico Coveri Porome. I think this is better though. But Enrico Coveri Porome is also a really good fragrance. With uh, there's some patchouli in here, geranium, carnation, cedar, oak moss, leather, musk, tonka bean, and amber. Just a stunner, and one that does not get the hype. Um, you know, it, 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 people like me and Rich Mitch will talk about this, but very rarely are you going to get someone banging the table going, go buy Francesco Smalto Pour Homme. Although there's been a couple of people that have hit me up and said, hey man, this was like my signature scent when I was a kid or when I was younger. Uh, I'm so happy you like it. I got to go find another bottle. And, you know, prices are starting to rise though, but uh, you can still get a pretty good deal on this normally. All right. So next on the list is, actually, this one also doesn't have a niece, but it has something very interesting. It has an accord called Anethol, A-N-E-T-H-O-L, Anethol. And according to, um, according to Parfumo, they say that Anethol is a component of several essential oils, especially it defines the scent of aniseed. So I had to include it. Uh, and this is Dominique Ropion's Geranium Pour Monsieur. So as far as getting to know Frederick Mall's lineup, it's interesting because Rich Mitch really fell in love with, with uh, Geranium Pour Monsieur. And I really fell in love with Rose and Queer. And I think those are two fragrances that you can really wear during the heat. Rose and Queer and Geranium Pour Monsieur just both work fantastic in the heat. I think they're both amazing fragrances. I just, I haven't fell head over heels for this yet. Um, although in the heat, I could totally see how this mintiness, you know, it almost kind of uses mint in the same way that Roadster uses mint. Just fantastic fragrances for the heat. Mint, geranium, peppermint. There's a florazone and uh rodinol note. And then that anethol note, which I was mentioning earlier, is the one that gives it the aniseed-like touch. Um, and the other ones, Flor Florazone is a fragrance ingredient by IFF. It's said to have a clean and green scent reminiscent of a fresh ocean breeze. And Rodinol is a fragrance ingredient which is used for flowery scents. It shall resemble rose and geranium and also have a wax-like and green aspect. So Dominique Ropion knows what the hell he's doing. Uh, there's clove, cinnamon, sandalwood, white musk, ambroxan, frankincense, and styrax. And that ambroxan does throw. This thing throws. Uh, I mean, people will smell you, especially in the heat, but it's a clean, it's a clean smell. It's a fresh uh, smell. And yeah, I mean, I would love to smell, this is a newer bottle. This is after Estee Lauder uh, bought them. I would love to smell a vintage bottle of this. So I'm on the hunt. I'm on the hunt for a vintage bottle of Geranium Pour Monsieur. Okay, let's go to Guerlain. 
So we've got a couple Guerlains. One is Le Bleu. And Le Bleu has a little bit of this anisic aldehyde thing going on as Apre Londe, to my nose anyway. There's anise, bergamot, carnation, neroli, iris, vanilla, tonka bean, benzoin, violet, and heliotrope. And heliotrope is not listed on the um, Parfumo note listing, interestingly enough, because if you actually look at the back of this, this is a tester bottle, you'll see main notes, heliotrope. And I get a huge purple, you know, um, heliotrope adds this texture to me, this, you know, almost like they're taking a mold of your tooth. It's, I've explained it that way many a times, but it's the best explanation. Imagine they take some putty and they put it on your tooth, you know, at the dentist office and pull it out and it keeps the mold, that putty feel, that texture. That's what heliotrope gives to a fragrance. And it's here, but it's very purple. The iris and the violet give off this deep purple hue. Uh, beautiful uh, creation by Jacques Guerlain. You know, whenever he created this, he said that he basically felt something so deeply he could only express it in a perfume. And bravo, because not only did he create one of the per best perfumes of all time, but he also created one of the best fra fragrance lines I've ever heard about a descriptor of why we love perfume so much. I felt something so deeply that I could only express it in a perfume. Spot on. And this was 1912 this came out you know, a couple years before the Great War. And, you know, you just you just try to put yourself in the shoes of someone living in France at that time and what it must have felt like. You know, it must have felt like it wasn't just a sunset for that day, but it was a sunset for, like, that entire era. Like, uh, the sun was setting on the old world and he was there to kind of witness it, you know? Just a, just a very deep, introspective scent. I love wearing Le Bleu. It just brings out all of these emotions. So, beautiful fragrance from 1912. And then, from 2005, we've got Lidge. L'Instant de Guerlain Eau Extreme. Now, I've got multiple types of bottles of this. I've got the one with the black around here. I've got this one that says the Eau Extreme on the bottom. The new one that says L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Eau de Parfum, which is basically this in a new bottle. They're all... Fantastic. Guerlain does great reformulations. You know, don't pay silly money for a vintage. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Um, there's just, there's no reason. Just go get the new, pay 50 bucks for the, for the uh, Listerine bottle and, and call it a day. You'll be happy. This is um, Beatrice Piquet, who created two monster fragrances in my collection. I have backups of both. She created this and she created Trussardi Uomo from 1983. What what amazing two fragrances she made. Uh, I think Jean-Paul Guerlain was still kind of there helping her, but she basically, this is her creation. Uh, it's star anise, citrus notes, LME resin, patchouli blossom, jasmine, neroli, ca uh, cacao. And that cacao note, you'll definitely get that chocolatey patchouli, cedar, uh, sandalwood, hibiscus seed, and tea, which hibiscus seed is ambrette, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know why they list it as hibiscus seed and not ambrette, um, but it usually gives off, hibiscus seed or ambrette was used to give off this muskiness, you know, it was used to replace musk. And so, but this is a, this is a patchouli cacao. You'll get a little bit of the citrus star anise. Uh, I think the citrus is even more amped up in the eau de toilette. So if you um, want more of the citruses, go for the eau de toilette. Okay. Next on the list, we have a Histoise de Parfum, and I love that they do these little 15 mil. These are perfect for someone with a big collection. You can see, just, just perfect. Um, they come like this, and this is called 1725. So 1725, I think it used to be called Casanova. They did away with the names. Um, but 1725 kind of competes with Invasion Barbar. So if you've ever smelled Invasion Barbar by MDCI, you kind of have an idea. But the biggest difference is, is that 1725 is much more powdery than Invasion Barbar. Invasion Barbar doesn't go as powdery 
and it brings in a little bit more violet leaf. So this, 1725 though, uses a couple notes. It has grapefruit, it has bergamot, lemon, and licorice. So there's licorice in the top with lavender and star anise, and that star anise and licorice play this combo with each other between the top and the mid. And the dry down is almond, so there's no almond in 1720 in um, Invasion Barbar. Vanilla, amber, cedar, and, and sandalwood. And something about this fragrance makes it very powdery. Whereas you're not going to get the powderiness from Invasion Barbar. So one of these days, maybe even I'll do a comparison video. But um, they're both fantastic. I just, I don't know if I'll own full bottles of either. I think if you twisted my arm and said pick one, I'd probably pick Invasion Barbar, personally. Uh, but they're both really good. Yeah. Okay. So that's 1725 by Histoire de Parfum, underrated barbershop scent. Okay, next on the list, we have a discontinued, we have back-to-back -back discontinued Jill Sander fragrances. So we're going to start with uh, 1993 since we're going in alphabetical order, and this is called Background. So I don't have a full bottle of this. I've got a mini, thanks to Anuj. Um, and this is uh, a spicy, sweet, woody. It has that... Uh, signature, that Jill Sanders signature of uh, raspberry. So there's anise, tarragon, lavender, raspberry, which will give you a little bit of a throwback to the next fragrance I'm going to show you, which came out in 1989. I like both of these, actually. I just think I like um, the Jill Sander feeling man or Jill Sander man even better. But this is really good. I'll do a video on this. It, it's got heliotrope, cinnamon, lily of the valley, carnation, jasmine, lily, rose, Benzoin, sandalwood, uh, tonka bean, musk, vanilla, amber, and cedarwood. So this came out a couple years after. Uh, background, Jill Sander background came out a couple years after Jill Sander Feeling Man, which is next on the list. So this is Feeling Man distributed by Lancaster. Whoops, where is it? Where is it? Ah, yes, right here. Distributed by Lancaster. And this is Jill Sander Man. Distributed by Jill Sander Cosmetic. Both of them, fantastic. Doesn't matter. Whichever one you can find. This is a very hard fragrance to find nowadays. But um, this came out in 1989. So it came out a couple years before Background. And I think originally it was known as Feeling Man. And then it became Jill Sander Man. Then it got discontinued. Um, but it's uh, tarragon, bergamot, lavender, anise, fruits, and green notes. So the biggest difference is you get a lot more fruitiness in the top of, of this than you do in, in background. Um, but you also get more of this balsam fir. Uh, it still has the raspberry. The raspberry is a little bit like a Jill Sanders like DNA, you know? Uh, and you get this... Um, Oris. So whereas background uses heliotrope, in Jill Sander Man you get this Oris with geranium, oak moss, tonka, amber, cedar, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, and the uh, kicker is tobacco. So you get tobacco in Jill Sander uh, Man or Feeling Man. There's no tobacco in background, but they're both amazing. I mean, uh, they, they're they probably both full bottle worthy. I probably should get a bottle of background, but I'll do a video on it sooner or later. I've been holding off. I've been waiting to do this video for a while. So, uh, they both have that anise. They both actually have anise and tarragon in the top. So, if you like one, you'll probably like the other because they will remind you of each other. Okay, next on the list we have a Les Abstraits, a release from this year. from 2023 and this is in contention for probably my favorite Les Abstraits. Um, I'm going to try to have Eugene on the channel for an interview, kind of um, more interview style, you know, have him on the channel kind of like we did with Clandestine Laboratories and uh, Liz Moore's from Papillon and Russian Adam, like have him on. He can put his um, Les Abstraits hat on and join and this is um, DeSandra's. So DeSandra's is... Uh, Absolutely, to me, it's just such a throwback to the past. Antoine Lee created Desandras. It is 
Oh, it's so good. I've worn this a couple times already this year since I've gotten it. And um, I know I said that La Dulé Exquise is my favorite, and I think it still is, but the gap is just closing. Desandra's is like closing that gap more and more. I love what this does. It's anise, birch tar, galbanum. They say Swiss pine tar with clove, Indian tuberose, leather, Moroccan mint, violet leaf, African hyrax, Haitian vetiver, Indonesian patchouli, and oak moss. And I know I've said it before, but I have to say it again. If you have smelled the opening of Devon by Aramis, which is one of the greatest galbanum sheepers of all time, you're going to kind of get an example of what Desandra's does, but this is much more um, there's much more of this birch tar, pine tar, sticky tar feeling being in the forest. There's also tuberose in here. There's no tuberose in Devon. There's hyrax in here. There's no hyrax in Devon. So there's some differences going on, of course. Uh, they're different fragrances, especially in the dry down. But, uh, I mean, to me, this is about as, as good as modern perfumery gets. For vintage lovers, this brand is about as good as modern perfumery gets, as far as I'm concerned. And anyone who says otherwise, or says that, you know, I'm lying about how I truly feel just because I know Eugene, uh, I don't think they've smelled this. I think they're just so blinded by hate. It's funny because, you know, when, some, when someone from the community steps out and does something great, you would think that most people would be happy for them. Like, you know, that's the time you would think that the majority of people would be happy, but there's a small contingent that go the other way. Uh, it's like they see someone doing well, and, and instead of trying to kind of push them up the mountain, they like pull on their coattails to drag them down. It's sad, really, but um, don't judge this by, the, by what's being said. Judge this brand by your own nose is my advice. You know, he sells samples now. Get a sample. Um, and if you think it's worthy, get yourself a full bottle. I think they're full bottle worthy. I think they're blind buy worthy if you have my kind of taste. If you have vintage taste, I think they're blind buy worthy. But um, get it, do as I say, not as I do. Get a sample. Okay, next on the list is going to be a Lolita Lampica. And this fragrance is discontinued. Actually, both of these Lolita Lampicas I'm going to show you are discontinued. And this, these will be very close to the top of the Anise um, ranking. When I rank this list, these will be very close to the top because uh, they really epitomize what Anise in a masculine, modern masculine fragrance should do. This came out in 2001, uh, and this is called O Masculin. So O Masculin, apparently there were some bottles that had built-in sprayers, and then they had caps before they got dis. I don't know. I don't know the the. I don't know which one's which. All I know is that. Uh, all I know is that this is an amazing fragrance, and uh, if you like opium, porom, um, if you like sushi imperial, I would urge you to to try this. If you like body koros, I would urge you to try this. Uh, this is anise with absinthe and ivy. There's an ivy note in here. There's rum, there's violet, orgeat syrup, vanilla, tonka bean, cedar, and cystus. And that cystus labdanum uh, really gives it... Whoa. You know, you can smell kind of the, the vanilla, resinous, tonka with that cystus labdanum. It's beautiful for the cold, but I think it works fantastic anytime actually the only thing is it's a little sweet for the heat and so there is a sweet you know gourmand oriental feel going on but that anise in the opening and the color of the bottle again is spot on this is a perfect color combination you know not not so much the cap just the bottle so yes big fan Big fan of Lolita Lampica, all masculine. If you like a niece, definitely want to try to get your nose on it. It's discontinued, unfortunately. But uh, they, then they did a flanker. And this was done by the great Anique Minardo, by the way. And then she did a flanker. And she actually personally did this flanker as well. And I'm very glad to have it. This is from 2015. It's an, it's uh, all masculine in eau de parfum intense. So the original is eau de toilette. The original is an eau de toilette. 
This is an Eau de Parfum Intense. And this is hard to find, actually. It took me a while to find, find this, but I'm glad I did. Um, because what she did here is almost like nothing short of a miracle. And it's unbelievable that this does not get talked about more. I mean, I get it. It's discontinued and hard to find, expensive and all that stuff. But um, what she did is she kept the star anise and added a couple notes which kind of completely changed the complexity while also keeping the complex, while also keeping the original, which is a very hard thing to do, to make kind of a brand new fragrance, but also really harken back, you know, salute to the past, if you will. And so she added iris, myrrh, vetiver, and oud. So, so those four notes. And I think there, yeah, there's no vetiver, there's no iris, there's no myrrh, there's no oud in the original. Uh, and it just adds this darker, deeper uh, complexion, if you will. Just, I mean, again, look at the color combination. But that star anise from the opening is still there. It's beautiful. Um, deserves much more love. I know it'll never get the love it deserves because it got discontinued very quickly. But um, yes, Eau Masculin, Eau de Parfum, Intense. I'm a big fan. Okay. Next on the list, we have a Michael Coors fragrance. And again, discontinued. This is the 2001 version. They then re-released this in, I think, I believe 2014 or 15. Uh, it's a different fragrance, the re-release, although that was still a good fragrance, but I think that is now discontinued. But this is the version from 2001. It's called Michael. So Michael for Men by Michael Coors. And you can tell, if you look on the bottom, you can see that Michael Coors... Um, fragrances, a division of Givenchy. So that just shows you how old this bottle is. Um, this is a fantastic tobacco. This is like um, this is like a pipe tobacco with fruits and um, like this suede like like this suede like leathery feel to it, if you will. But it's also kind of woody and spicy. It's got patchouli and plum and um, dried fruits. But the top is elemi, cardamom, coriander, star anise, and tarragon. So again, there's that combo, star anise and tarragon. This time they've added thyme, bergamot, and frankincense. And um, it's, it's beautiful in the cold, very underrated. And Harry Fremont of Fermaniche made, made this. Um, I'm a big fan of Harry's, Harry's work. Okay. Next on the list, let me show you a couple decants that are on the chopping block to get discussed on the channel one of these days. This is uh, Quia Cuba by Parfums de Nicolai. And so Queer Cuba, uh, Queer Cuba Intense, excuse me, from 2014. Spicy floral uh, leather is basically what this is with tobacco. Uh, and... So there's anise and licorice in the top. Again, it's a common combination, an anise and licorice with lemon, mint, magnolia, ylang-ylang, coriander, sage, geranium, lavender, tobacco absolute, cedar, hay, musk, and patchouli. So I'm excited to, to try this. I've never sm sprayed this yet. I'm still waiting. Maybe I'll do it on a live stream for the first time. And then we've got, thanks to uh, my brother Eddie, Senator Eddie of Senatorial Rank, Thank you for sending this, my friend. Um, he sent me a ton of samples. And one of them was Olfactive Studios. And it's kind of a cool deal. So um, their whole thing is that their, their um, fragrances are based on a picture. And so the, the still life, which is the one we're going to talk about today, is based on this picture. What does this smell like? How do you create a, a fragrance based on a picture? I think it's an interesting uh, idea, and so Still Life, Still Life is created by Dora Bagrish Arnaud, and this is yuzu with pink pepper, Sichuan pepper, and the yuzu adds a lot of freshness with black pepper and elemi, uh, with galbanum, star anise, ambroxan, cedar, and rum. Kind of a cool combination. So I think I'm going to do a live stream and try these, you know, try these all at once. 
you know, it'll be a it'll be a great live stream idea, I think. So, yes. Um that is Still Life by Olfactive Studios from 2011. Okay, next on the list we have, uh, this is a fantastic fragrance. This is right up my alley. This could easily be a signature scent for me, but I don't, I don't have signature scents, but if I did, it, it could easily be this. This is uh, Oscar De La Renta Pour Louis. This is the original bottle. This is what the deep vintage looked like. And you can kind of tell by the bottom. And this is a, a Parfums Sanofi bottle. I think it was Parfums Stern first. Then it went to Sanofi. Then it went to, I forget who it was, EA or something. Now it's completely discontinued. But if you can find this, I already, I ran through an entire 50 mil of this. And this is my uh, second and third bottles. And so, yes, I mean, just um, just a, such a wearable vintage fragrance from the 80s. It's, it's spicy, woody, leathery. It's got aldehyde. So the aldehydes make it open up very... Oh, you know, it's funny because this is 1980. This is before Koros or um, Antaeus, my favorites. And it's already feeling like this is like a precursor to the fresher fragrances of the late 80s. It's like a precursor to, um, you know, uh, I'm thinking of things like Aramis New West, or, you know, think of Green Irish Tweed, or um, Cool Water, right? Those 80s fresher fragrances that came, this is almost like a precursor to that without being aquatic at all. It just has this, it doesn't have like the funk of the 80s fragrances that I love, and yet there's something leathery. There's like a leather in the base, uh, but it's all about like herbs and sage and juniper and lavender, caraway, anise, galbanum. Oh, in that old school patchouli that they used to do in the, in the 80s, and oh, I love this stuff, but it's still heavy. Even though it doesn't have the animalics, it's still a heavy fragrance. But there's something just so wearable about this. I, that's why I say this could easily be a signature scent. And I ran through 50 mils of this, and now I've got two 50 mil backups still. So I'm very happy. Okay, next on the list is a Paco. Actually, we're going to do a Papillon first. So Papillon. And this is a fragrance that's on my uh, to do a video on early impression. This is called Dryad. Well, one of the last Papillons that she gave me in the sample set that I have not done a video on yet. Uh, this is a green Chypre. Smells like it could come straight out of the 70s, right? It's uh, star anise with civet, tobacco, citron, costas, labdanum, galbanum, oak moss, narcissus, tarragon, castorium, bitter orange, iris, jonquil, which is like, uh, uh, is it daffodils? Um, lavender, orange blossom, geranium, benzoin, vetiver, Turkish rose, thyme, liatris, Spicata Absolute, Peru Balsam, Styrax, Woodland, and Ylang Ylang. What a note listing, and actually what a fragrance. This is probably full bottle worthy, but I don't know if I'll buy it. Uh, but it's it's a really good Chypre of, of old. Like if you like stuff like Val de Nui, if you like um, Number 19, if you like, uh, even if you like stuff like this, I mean, Desandras or... Ar Aramis Devon, if you like stuff like this, check out Dryad. It's really good. Um, okay, next on the list. Now we've got Paco Rabanne. This is Tenade. This is so good. If you like Pierre Wargnay's creations from, you know, the mid-80s, like Hugo Boss number one, you will absolutely dig this. If you like Marbert Gentleman, you'll dig, you'll, you'll dig this. This is a spicy, honeyed, uh, floral, like a big floral, but for men. It's a, it's a masculine targeted floral fragrance. This is in the age of Akitos and stuff like that, right? Uh, but this has this combination that Pierre Wargnay created for Boss Number One with the ant, with the pissy honey, and you smell it in here. You can smell kind of the evolution of Boss Number One into Tenere. I have two bottles of this, thank God, because I love this stuff. 
Uh, it's so unique, it's so different, and even though there's a ton of florals in here, there's carnation, there's lily of the valley, uh, there's jasmine, there's orris, and the flowers really pop. The It's offset by these old masculine notes, rosemary, and artemisia, and uh, anise, and tarragon, and lavender, and stuff like that. It's just a beautiful creation. Uh, one of these that it doesn't get hyped. It can be challenging, but if you're into perfume for art, check out Tanete. I've got a 200 mil backup of this, thank God. Okay, next on the list, we've got a Philip Pline, the only Philip Pline in my collection. It's No Limits. So No Limits is a 2020 release. It's an Alberto Morias. Imagine taking... Um, imagine taking... Nasomato's Pardon, because Pardon uses Oud, right? This also uses Oud. And adding um, some very strange, fresh, aquatic notes in the top. I know it sounds insane, and, and it is insane. This is an insane fragrance. And yet, for a designer, it's not bad. For 50 bucks or whatever I paid for this 50 mil, uh, it's not bad. It's, um, it's... Bergamot, ginger, aquatic notes, black pepper, clove, cinnamon, star anise, cardamom, leather, cedarwood, dark chocolate, huge patchouli, frankincense, patchouli, black amber, bourbon, vanilla, oud, and woods. Insane. Insane creation. And then we've got a Parfums Cortana fragrance called Bloodflower. And I have a video on this actually on the channel. You can go check out Bloodflower. Uh, and Bloodflower is one of the better Parfum Cortana fragrances. It's not my favorite. My favorite was Wolfsbane and then Iorfante. Those were my two favorites, but this is probably third. Uh, Bloodflower was very, very good. Spicy, earthy. It was built by Alexandria Carlin of Simrise, and uh, it's anise, licorice, patchouli, black rose, amber, blood, iris, and clover. And if you don't know about the Fatal Potions line, you know, Bloodflower is kind of a uh, poisonous flower, if you will, rumored to grow where blood spills on the earth. And so for a unique scent, you know, blood, licorice, anise, black rose, it's it's clover. It's really good, actually. If I was going to buy three full bottles from this line, it would be Bloodflower, Wolfsbane, and Iorfante. And I, I did a live stream where I blind sniffed some of these. Just absolutely... 100%, 100% stay away from um, Digitalis. Digitalis is one of the worst fragrances I've ever smelled. I named three really good ones. Digitalis is absolutely horrendous. I hated Digitalis. It's got this disgusting cucumber. Oh, God. It almost made me erp. So bad. Uh, but... The three I just named, Irofante, um, Wolfsbane, and Bloodflower are, are full bottle. They could be easily full bottles. Okay, next on the list, we've got a Roja. The only Roja on the list, interestingly enough, especially since he loves to take into account, like, you know, vintage scents and vintage fragrances. I'm surprised he doesn't use Anise more. But um, this is the only one from my collection that showed Anise. And this is uh, Oligarch which is discontinued, sadly. This is the Eau de Parfum. They also put out a Pure Parfum for a little bit, and then whenever Russia invaded Ukraine, they just discontinued it. Um, they discontinued the whole oligarch line, unfortunately, because these are really good. These were these were some of the better Rojas. Uh, it smells, it's kind of like, uh, imagine Roja uh, takes Terre de Hermes and Rojas it up, okay? It's the best way I can describe it. It's lime, bergamot, lavender, thyme, lemon, Champaka flower, orange blossom, black currant, apple, coconut, and a real coconut note, not like castorium, but it says coconut. No, this is coconut with jasmine from grass, lily. Uh, you know, there's fruits in here that smell all kind of, some days you'll get weird, you'll get strawberries. I mean, you'll get all kind of things in this. This is a complex fruity shepra. Um, juniper berry, ambergris, cedar wood, galbanum, iris, amber, anise, birch, grass, leather, mate, tea, musk, oak moss, patchouli, pink pepper, vanilla, and tonka bean. So the anise is in the base here. 
And you notice most of the fragrances we've been going through, the anise is in the top and the heart. So yes, Oligarch comes in at, well, it's not ranked, but it came in next there. All right, next on the list, we've got, uh, I'm so used to doing ranked videos now. Next on the list, we have a Salvador Dali. And I have a backup of this, thank God, because this is one of the best masculines from the 80s. One of the best creations that Thierry Vassar ever did, ever. This is Salvador Dali Pour Homme. What a fragrance. I mean, just give me a kiss. It is stunning. Oh, I wish Thierry Vassar would. I wish Thierry Vassar would grow some balls and do some shit like this at Guerlain, you know? Um, this is a spicy, animalic take on... Uh, it feels kind of like a fougere, but I don't think it's a proper fougere, but it has this earthy, animalic, um, the anise and the tarragon, again, winning combo in the top with basil, bergamot, lavender, man mandarin orange, lemon, moss, heliotrope, jasmine, geranium, lily of the valley, uh, patchouli, amber, musk, vetiver, and vanilla, and uh, it is just a perfect take on masculine perfumery from the 80s. And I just, oh, it's so good. I just, I'm so comfortable in these type of fragrances, you know, they just feel like home to me. Okay, next on the list, we have a Tiffany fragrance and it's Tiffany for men. This is the vintage uh, before Coty took over the label and uh, Coty's doing their, um, it actually says made for Tiffany and Co. on these older bottles, but this is an old one. This is, I don't know, I don't know what the new ones are like. Actually, I skipped a couple, um, so we'll come back to them, but I don't know what the, what the new ones are like, but if you can find these older bottles of Tiffany for men, very good stuff. Cardamom, lavender, uh, anise is in the heart with nutmeg and jasmine and orris and rose and vanilla, amber, frankincense. It smells like a deeper, thicker version of uh, Chanel's Poe Monsieur or Dior Eau Sauvage or something like that. Uh, spicy, deeper, you know. Uh, I like this more than Chanel's Poe Monsieur. Okay, let's go backwards and grab the two we skipped. Next on the list was a sense of wood fragrance and this was sent to me by Rachel. This is Papyrus in Acacia from 2021. Jean-Marc Chailin made this. I think the uh, son of the great perfumer Raymond Chailin, I think. Don't hold me to that. But uh, this is Carrot. Yes, a carrot note. Kind of like the old Leonard bottles. Carrot, uh, Cipriol, Egyptian Cassie Absolute. Egyptian Cassie Absolute. There's a note. Uh, Egyptian Geranium Absolute, Indian Tuberose Absolute, Java Vetiver, Oris Concrete, Star Anise, and Tonka Bean Absolute. Um, so yes, I've got a couple of these. Maybe I'll do a live stream, a Sense of Wood live stream one day. And then we've got Spirit of Dubai. I know I'm going to do a Spirit of Dubai live stream one day because I've got a couple of these thanks to um, uh, Paolo. And this is Boz. I want a full bottle of this, actually, but uh, I don't want to blind buy it, so this will be fantastic. So this is um, black pepper, coriander, nutmeg, pepper, plum, aldehydes, clove, leather, saffron, star anise, coffee, cardamom, cinnamon, red berries, bergamot, and mint in the top. Heart of birch, carnation, uh, frankincense, geranium, leather, lily of the valley, rose, tuberose, langy lang, honey, tobacco, floral notes, jasmine, and orchid in the mid, and the base of copiba balsam. Guarjum balsam, musk, castorium, Indian oud, patchouli, cystus, sandalwood, vetiver, amber, civet, costus, guyacwood, labdanum, myrrh, peru balsam, tonka bean, praline, and cinnamon. Hell of a note listing on the Spirit of Dubai's. Um, and then we've got a fragrance I absolutely love. This is anise with licorice again, but this adds this coffee and rum and leather in the base. It's Yoji Om, but this is a Japanese house, Yoji Yamamoto, and this wears like a Japanese fragrance. It wears very light for heavy notes. Um, it wears very light for coffee and rum and leather and tonka and cedar and sandalwood and rosewood and cinnamon. It has this Japanese style airiness to it. Um, Jean Mike Michel Duriez was the perfumer, and um, uh, Jean 
Patu Parfums actually owned Yo Yo Yoji Yamamoto when this came out. And then um, I think Procter & Gamble ended up buying them and discontinuing this, of course. Then they tried to re-put it out and they butchered it. So you have to get the version from 1999. Luca Turin loves this stuff. And I don't blame him. It's really good. And then we've got YSL Jazz. One of my favorite fragrances of all time. I've got three bottles of this stuff because, my God, because why not? Uh, I never want to be without Jazz. Jazz is, oh, fuck. I can, I mean, I don't know if you can see, but there's like a little bit that spilled right there, got on the collar, and I can smell it. I'll be able to smell it from that for years. Oh, it's so good, though. Oh, it's nutmeg, anise, cardamom, coriander, basil, lavender, tarragon, bergamot, cinnamon, jasmine, geranium, iris, carnation, oak moss, sandalwood, leather, tobacco, cedar, musk, tonka bean, and amber. It reminds me a little bit of like Safari, Ralph Lauren's Safari for Men, or Guerlain's Heritage. It has a little bit of that, or Escada Por Homme. I just love. Oh, I love these kind of fragrances. So it spawned two flankers. Uh... The one we're going to talk about today is called Jazz Prestige. And Jazz Prestige came out in 93. It adds a little bit more fruitiness to it. It kind of keeps the DNA of jazz, but it adds things like um, uh, fruit. There's this fruity feel to it that is missing from um, the original jazz. They, they claim there's Mysore Sandalwood in, in here. I don't know if there was Mysore in the original jazz or not, but... Um, Fantastic. If you end up liking Jazz Prestige, the more playful version of Jazz, I prefer the, the original of the Jazz, but if you like Jazz Prestige, I would urge you to check out this. This is called Vermeil for Men. Uh, it comes in like a lighter, almost like a, almost like a lighter bottle, you know? And, but this is a cheapie. This is like, 20 bucks I, got, I paid for this, I think, and it's really good. I have no clue when it was made, but these two kind of remind me of each other. Just a little tip. All right, two left, two YSLs left, and we're, and we're done. And 2003, this is Rive Gauche Pour Homme. This is uh, Jacques Cavalier, and this is uh, Barbershop City. This is the original. They repackaged it in 2011. I don't know what the repackaging was like, but in 2003... This is like the um, uh, mark from the Robes 08 channel says, this is the smell of every dad out there. Shaving foam, excuse me, shaving foam. Um, there's, it's woody, it's spicy. The star anise feels a little bit woody here, although there is Gaiac wood and uh, rosemary. Rosemary gives it a little bit of this traditional throwback vibe, like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme is what I always think of with rosemary, right? Bergamot, lavender, clove, geranium, Gaiac wood, patchouli, and vetiver. And uh, these bottles go for silly money nowadays, but it is a fantastic barbershop scent. And the star anise plays a big role. And Jacques Cavalier did this, and he also did this. This is Opium Porom, the Eau de Toilette. I have the Eau de Parfum coming from Poland at some point, hopefully soon, in the next couple months. Um, the Eau de Parfum is the one with the blue kind of plastic cover. This is black currant star anise. Um, Galengal, pepper, bourbon vanilla, tolu balsam, and atlas cedar. And this will compete for probably one of the best star anise fragrances out there. So that's the list. That is the, this is not a top 10 anise, star anise list. Tell me what your favorites are. Tell me uh, which ones I missed that you absolutely love that have the note of star anise. And I uh, love seeing your faces in the comments. Do, do the like and subscribe and all the stuff you're supposed to do for, you know, all the stuff I'm supposed to tell you to do as a YouTuber, uh, a YouTuber, but, uh, but I do appreciate the support. It does help with the algorithm and we're getting a lot of, uh, we're getting a lot of eyeballs and attention on the channel. And that makes me happy that, uh, there's so many fragrance lovers out there that are enjoying the content. And I love doing this. I love talking about perfume. So you guys make it possible. So thank you very much again. Cheers, everyone. And I hope to see you probably in a couple days with another video. Bye, guys.